Hey everyone, you're listening to or watching Will Taylor Music Live, and you can click below to get notified when I go live, uh, or you can subscribe to my YouTube channel where I have lots of free content, uh, you could call it the free subscription area, or subscribe to stringsattached.bandcamp.com where I'll be making all kinds of amazing content. There already is so much available there. Stringsattached.bandcamp.com. You can go check it out right now uh, and, and listen to just a ton of my music for free. But I'm also uploading training videos, videos about behind the scenes. And first I want to apologize for this weird uh, fluorescent light here at uh, Orange Coworking, which is a great space. You should check it out, Orange Coworking. And behind me I'm going to be showing you videos of strings attached outreach shows that we've done so while I'm talking you can wander off in there but I, I really want to make this video because I've been getting I've been noticing a pattern of people that have been writing into me and I really want to address it uh, I've got an actual letter from somebody and I also have another person that I want to address this is going to remain anonymous but it's I just really want to make a video quickly because then I can cut and paste this video when I get this kind of letter and it's basically the idea is people that are in their anywhere from their late 20s to middle age feeling like they have failed because they didn't follow their dreams excuse me because they didn't follow their dreams to become a professional musician and they're regretting and they're having these this this uh, crisis as as somebody in whatever age they are they feel like they it sounds like they're they're judging themselves and that their self-worth is is complete not completely but uh, very much so determined by the fact that they didn't make it as a professional musician and a lot of these letters I'll just read this one and I, I really want to address that because I think that there are a lot of opportunities if you're not dead yet <laughs> that it's not done yet and then I also I want to just say to people stop judging and stop making your self worth based on whether you made it as a professional musician or not. There are so many areas that are non-professional in music that you can, I'm just going to go and dress it right now, that you can affect people. I am a professional musician, have been so for 30 years. It's an extremely demanding, extremely difficult profession to make a living in. But I still enjoy playing music in campfires and for just around folks in, for free, for, in circles, and for when people want it, and around people that, that aren't professional musicians. I love the community aspect of music. So I want to read this letter here that I just got recently. And what's sad to me is, is that people go on for years and years and years beating themselves up and thinking because they can't stand in front of an audience and not be terrified that that makes them less than a person. Well, I'll just tell you right now, I still have horrible stage fright. Not horrible, but I, I have, let's put it this way, I've struggled with stage fright for many years, and it's something that has taken a lot of work to work through, and I've learned to channel that into my performance. And so being terrified in front of an audience as a performer is not a new thing. A lot of famous performers have had this, and when I was a kid in high school, I almost gave up, and because of this uh, anxiety that I had, I thought this wasn't a career for me. I had people make fun of me. I had musician friends tell me that maybe I should consider another career. Okay, I still have, you know, challenges with that. Now you're looking in the background. These are outreach shows. I'm leading an outreach show there for kids, and this is something that we do. Thanks for your likes and comments. I love to see the likes and comments. And if you're watching this and it's inspirational, share it with your friends right now. It's something I want to address. And I get letters from people all the time, like this guy right here. Um, let's read this letter. So while I'm reading, you can kind of watch in the background some of the outreach work that I've done over the years and that I want to do more of with your help by becoming a subscribing mem member of stringsattached.bandcamp.com, $5 a month or more. When we reach the 200 subscriber threshold, we're going to be doing four outreach concerts for people that can't afford it every month. There's that resource that's available here in Austin, ready to go right now. If we had 200 people today, I would start arranging those tomorrow. Right now, we're at 50. <laughs> we're at one quarter of the way there. We need 150 more subscribers and these things that you're seeing. So I'm sorry to make that side trip there, but um, anyway, 
there's a lot more music to be shared than just at shows and being famous and stepping in front of a, people, a bunch of people. Uh, this guy says, um, he says to me, those glasses are very cool. I hate to say it, but I'm astonished that you only have 48 patrons. How can that be? Great advice in the video. Not just for children, either. Can you guys hear me okay? I'm going to go ahead and read this, but could somebody give me a little feedback that you can hear my um, voice okay? I'm sorry. This is moving around so much. Elizabeth, can you hear me okay? Because I don't want to shout. I'm at the co-working space. There's Karen Mall and Steve Carter in the background. Somebody give me a thumbs up that you're hearing me okay. Okay, I'm going to go on if I'm assuming it's okay. So, um, he, I'll read from the beginning. I'm not, I'm astonished that you only have 48 patrons. How can that be? Great advice in this video. It's equally valid for emotionally disturbed people like me who can, who can disassociate in front of people while performing, although that hasn't happened in a while. But it's traumatic when it does, and it requires a lot of working through to understand it and get a handle on it. Or better still, let go of. Hey, Dave Sher, Awesome. I've committed recently to going to open mics every chance I get, and, and I've done a little better each of the last four times, gaining little nanograms of confidence, which hopefully now are sufficient to sing and play. So I'm not going to read any more of this, but um, anyway, he says, this gives me some perspective on why what you do is so important and even sacred to me. It really is sacred to help people bridge their fears and turn it into heart, art at some point. There's nothing more important. I was disappointed yesterday. I couldn't get to see your live show. So what I want to address is that if you have a lot of fear that you shouldn't, number one, judge yourself that you're not a professional musician, that you didn't make it. Because, uh, and, and I, let me just say my emotional response to that, a lot of people are going out and trying to make it as a professional musician. Uh, and they have day jobs. Well, for those of us that are doing it for 30 years, we have a little bit of an emotional response to the cluttering of the, the world of music and everybody wanting to do it. I know that, that, um, that it's a free world, but for those of you that are just starting this, this journey again to become a professional musician, you have this goal, please, what I suggest is go play for your friends. Invite them over for a night. Go to campfires. Go to campouts. Do, do some things on, on the street. Do some busking. Get your skill together and don't judge yourself if you don't have it together within a few months. People are writing me wanting to sit in with my band and they say that they, and they, they haven't studied, they haven't done the hard work, the tens, the 10,000, you know about the 10,000 rule? 10,000 hours about to mastery? And they're showing up and wanting to gig and wanting to sit in and they don't have the skill yet. That doesn't mean that they can't play and, and um, be of service to others at whatever level they're at. So do that first, please, before you start cluttering the professional world of music. Please, I'm begging you, this is my personal, personal plea to amateurs and wannabe musicians out there. Can you please go serve Go play for your kids, go play for schools, play for nursing homes, play for retirement centers, play for places, get your act together for five, ten years, put in ten years of work on your craft. Then go to somebody that you respect that is a teacher and play for them and ask them what they think of your skill level before you go starting watering down the market and bringing the level of down because that's my emotional re reaction to people that do that because there, it does it happens especially in austin texas right dave share <laughs> and it is a free world so fine i can't stop it but that's just my little pitch is don't okay if you want to get back into music and you first of all don't judge yourself number one find people where you can do it for free and you can affect their lives i still enjoy doing the jam session I still enjoy going to campfires and playing, but put five or ten years in of good hard work. You know, it's like if you were a surgeon, you, you'd have to put your time in before you do a surgery. Can you treat music that way as well? Okay. But my main message is, is if you have nerves, if you're scared and terrified, know also that that happens. Well, some people don't have that. Some people are lucky. Dave, I think you're one of those people, Dave Sher. <laughs> They don't have any nerves whatsoever. They walk on stage, they're completely relaxed. They haven't had any trauma. 
and that's great. But there are some of us that do have ha that have had some trauma, and have uh, it's terrifying to get in front of people. But guess what? You can work through it. And maybe you know another thing. You might be part of your process is you might have to accept that you may never be without that fear. So look up. Um, Famous jazz singer Ella Fitzgerald had very, very intense fear. There are a lot of classical musicians that have intense fear. They step up there and they channel that and make that part of their performance. But don't consider you less of a person. Uh, maybe if you can't ever get over this, maybe you want to be a composer. Maybe you want to be an arranger. Maybe you want to do something that's more behind the scenes that doesn't make you less of a person. It doesn't make you uh, a failure in life. We love you. Okay? You have a reason to be here and a reason to exist and help others and be service to others. It maybe it doesn't have to be playing in front of a huge audience, okay? There are only a certain number of slots available. There are. Or maybe you can do some things like what I did here in these videos. You go out to retirement homes, nursing homes. Oh my gosh, there are so many slots. Look at those kids from 2002. There are so many slots available to be of service that way that where, you know, there are so many options available to you that aren't about being famous, writing a hit song, writing your music, playing for money. Can you consider some, here's some of the options that I've explored in the last, you know, 30 years of my music history. This is Zirkel playing, introducing bass. Hey, Donna Hall, how's it going? So I'm showing you all the other options that are available behind me, and I'd love some interaction. Would anybody like to ask a question? Because once I get kind of emotional about it, I start going off on tangents. <laughs> and um, I wanted to read another. There's a, another guy that's been wanting to come sit in with me. And he's, he gets real negative and feels like his life's a failure. Because he didn't make certain choices early in his life to be a musician. I also had a friend from junior high school that came onto one of my feeds and said, I wish I had done like you, Will. I wish I had focused on my original music not playing in cover bands, and now I'm a loser. Basically that kind of like stuff, you know, pity party. We all do it. I still do it too. As successful as I am, as successful as people think I am, I still fall into those moments of regret. And I see other musicians that are way more successful than I am. Um, Elias Hasslinger, for example, who can bebop his ass all over the place. And I wish I had practiced more. That's right. But... That doesn't do any good. It doesn't help us. Let's 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 get on the train and let's enjoy where we are now in this moment. Let's enjoy what we can do and let's practice and enjoy playing with other people and reaching out. But please take your time. Don't go out there. Invest the time with a teacher. Invest the time jamming. Invest some time playing for people. Like I'm trying to develop my singing skill. I'm not going out and playing, even though I'm a professional musician. I'm not going out and singing professionally. I might sing backup, but I'm working on singing at um, uh, jam sessions and uh, potlucks and things like that and having fun with that. So there you go. I will see you guys later. There's no more. I see Dave Shear says go out and jam. It's a great way to work on your something. Anyway, if you're seeing some videos of our outreach work, you can check that out at willhelps.com. I also have a link in this live video to... Hey, everybody. How's it going? I have a link to a, a charity that helps uh, buy instruments for children. Okay, so let's get all this in perspective for those of you that see me and wonder why didn't I do like you? Why, didn't, why wasn't I like the grass is greener on the other side? Was, why didn't I study like Will Taylor? Why didn't I become a you know, successful musician? It must be great. Oh, another thing the guy said was, this friend of mine, I hope he's watching now, he said, it must be so nice to be able to make a living playing music and not have to do X, 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 X kind of stuff. And, you know, grass is greener. Don't you love that? <laughs> Well, I can say it must be nice to have a retirement. It must be nice to have some certainty in your life. It must be nice to buy a house. It must be nice to do this. It must be nice to do that. We can all say that of each other, or, or not. Um, okay, hey, Mom, how you doing? All right, let's go out and make a difference. And remember, you're still here. You're not dead yet, as Karen likes to say. So 
you know, but go study. Find a teacher, have fun playing for your friends, and please don't clutter up the professional musician scene until you're ready. Take some auditions. You know, you wouldn't go operate on somebody if you were going to be a surgeon, would you? Okay. Play some open mics. Yes, open mics. That's great. Um, I'm glad to be of service to any of you. If you have any questions, you want to have some music lessons, would like me to help you with your career of any kind, I'd love to meet with you. Subscribe to our YouTube channel below for more of these videos. Become a Strings Attached subscriber for $5 or more a month and help us do more of this outreach work. When we reach 200 subscribers, we're going to do four outreach shows every month. Every month. We are one-fourth of the way there. That's part of this campaign is reaching out to you. So stringsattached.bandcamp.com. Thanks for watching and become a subscriber now. I'd love to see a few of you come on board now and check out willhelps.com. That's where we show all the things that we do in the community. This is a uh, people's community clinic back here. There's two of you watching. So The reason why I stay on so long is that the longer I stay on, the more Facebook does this algorithm and gets it out to people. And A lot of people are telling me, like, make shorter videos, Will, but it's kind of like a radio broadcast. People keep coming on, so I keep talking. How many of you have any questions? This, this um, fluorescent light is just horrible. I think I'm going to go now, and I hope to see you guys out there in the world or online, stringsattached.bandcamp.com. Thanks for watching. There's another school show in Denver, playing for kids in Denver, Colorado, about uh, four years ago, introducing them to instruments. It's more of the things that we will do four times a month for schools, nursing homes, retirement homes that can't afford this kind of outreach. We will go out and give it. If we have 200 patrons that sign on, that's one of the things that we will commit to doing. We are ready to do it. Why don't, let's make it 200 today. Why don't we do it? And we'll commit to doing this. And now I'm losing my train of thought. And I hope to see you guys later.